Father Lord, I thank you, I worship you, oh God, I give you praise. I give you praise, Almighty Father. You deserve all the glory, you deserve all the honor. Father, be exalted, be exalted, Abba Father. This evening, Lord, we surrender before you, Lord. I subject myself under your power. I declare, Lord, you are touching lives, oh God. I declare that you are touching somebody today. You are touching somebody's life in this evening service, our main service. Father, I pray, may your glory rest upon every person tuning into this service this evening. I declare your power is touching somebody, oh God. I declare your glory is touching somebody in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, be exalted above the heavens, be exalted above the earth, oh God. There is no one else like you. My Father, my God, I, wo I worship you in this hour. I declare that, Lord, you are doing something great in our lives in this hour. I declare you are doing something great in our lives in this hour, oh God. I pray, Lord, you speak to us, speak to our hearts. We are thirsty, we are we expect to hear from you. Lord, I pray that, Lord, our lives won't remain to be the same in this evening, my Father. Thank you for this day that you've made, that we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I worship you and I give you praise for it is in Jesus' name. And I believe and pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you so much for coming on board. If you're watching me, if you're able to hear me, let me know if my sound is clear. And then let's get into the word of God for today. It's a blessing to come live in our main service. And I know that God is going to bless you tremendously, even as he's blessing us this end in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Wherever you're watching from, wherever you're tuning in, it is a beautiful evening the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so much for coming on board. I I believe you're getting me loud and clear wherever you are. Just let me know if I'm loud and clear. Let me know if you're able to hear me well, so that we can be able to get going in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to, God. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Am I able, am I, am I, uh, am I clear? Is my sound clear? Somebody comment, somebody comment. Let me know if I'm, I'm clear, if my voice is coming out clear. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Adelaide, for that confirmation. God bless you. We're going to get straight into the word of God. And today I just want to speak to us uh, very briefly on the subject, walking in the spirit of revelation walking in the spirit of revelation praise the name of the lord walking in the spirit of revelation we are going to take our main text from the book of daniel daniel chapter number three daniel chapter number three verse number 20 daniel chapter three verse number 20 daniel chapter three uh verse number 20 if you're there with me you can say amen. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 20. The Bible says, uh, let me just get there. 3, verse 20. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The Bible says, let me be, start from verse number 19. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious that, that with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. Verse number 20. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego securely tied fell into the roaring flames. 24. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. Look, Nebuchadnezzar shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth one looks like a god. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar came close as he cooled to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come here. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm talking to us today on the subject, walking in the spirit of revelation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important for each one of us to understand that God's desire is that each one of us walk in the spirit of revelation. It is in the time, in the dispensation of time that we're living in, it is not enough to walk by sight. It is, an, it is not enough just to walk by what you hear. It is not enough just to walk by what you hear other people say. God's ultimate desire is that each one of us can be able to have a personal relationship with God to the place where God can reveal himself to us. Praise the name of Jesus. The times that we're living in, God wants to speak to us as individuals. And that is one of the main reasons why we at this particular hour, each one of us has, has uh, now has time to study the word of God by themselves. When you read the word of God, God begins to reveal himself to you. And this is why I want you to understand that when you're talking about walking in the spirit of revelation, revelation is a spirit that God has released upon his children. How do I know that the Bible says in the times we are living in, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Praise the name of the Lord. He says he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, meaning that there is nobody that is existing on the face of the earth that has not been given the, the, you know, the, the ability or rather the, 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 the permission to receive the spirit of God. Now, we understand that I was talking about us, us having inheritance in one of our lunch, our services. And I said, one of the things you must understand is that we are not orphans. We have a father. And the spirit God has given us is the spirit of adoption that Christ our father. Meaning that each one of us, we have a father. Each one of us, we have a father whom we can call to. But now, the father demands that each one of us get to a place of walking in revelation. Hallelujah. Because whatever God is going to be releasing and depositing in our hearts in this season is not based on what we hear from other people. It's not based on what we think. It is based on what God thinks. Because revelation, I will define revelation as a place of divine intelligence or adversary. Revelation is a place of divine intelligence over your adversary. And we all have a common adversary, the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that he has poured out his spirit upon all flesh, men and women, young and old. We all have the, the, the capacity. We all have the ability to receive from God. Hallelujah. We are coming back to church and, and nobody will be able to lie to you if you are drinking from the wells of revelation. Nobody will be able to, 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 to lie to you if you are drinking from the wells of revelation. When you have divine intelligence over your adversary, the devil, there are things that will begin to automatically distance themselves from you. The reason why you keep crying, you keep saying, God, why are you forsaken me? We keep saying, God, where are you? It is because we have not come to a place of understanding our position in Christ Jesus. Did you know that the Bible says that to them that received him, he gave them power to be called sons of God. When you become a son, you have authority. You have power over an estate. You have, you have been adopted into the kingdom of the Father. And when you're in the kingdom of the Father, the Bible says that the secrets of God are with them that fear him. When you have the fear of God, then God can entrust you with his secrets. So when you talk about walking in the spirit of revelation, I mean you have the ability to perceive the supernatural from the natural by God's divine grace. Revelation is the ability to perceive the supernatural, the ability to perceive the supernatural from the natural by God's divine grace. When you are walking in the spirit of revelation, you are able to distinguish the natural from the supernatural. That is why when things like COVID-19 came, them that are deep in spirit of revelation, we, we are able to understand in as much as this thing looks crazy. We have one confidence in us that we are not coming out of peace the same way we went in. <coughs> Sorry, praise the name of the Lord. We are not coming out of this season the same way we went in. The Bible talks of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar has given a decree and said everybody must worship his God. 
everybody must bow down to his God. But they got to a point that they said, you know what, king, we, we are careful in this matter. If you decide to throw us in the fire, what we will not do is we won't bow down to your God. Praise the name of the Lord. We will not bow down to the pressure of COVID-19. We will not bow down to the pressure of the negative energy out there. But we are careful to know that even if we will not come out of this fire, God is able to deliver us. And because these people are walking from a place of divine intelligence, they are walking from a place of understanding who their God is. Or the Bible says, them that know their God, they shall do exploits. And I came to declare tonight that whatever situation you are going through, if you are a son of God, if you are in the kingdom of God, then victory is your portion tonight in the name of Jesus. We must come to a place of understanding that when we are we, when we are walking in the in the spirit of revelation, God begins to show Himself to us. He begins to reveal His nature to us. He begins to show things to us that other people cannot see. That is why the things of the spirit in the book of Corinthians are only revealed to them that are spiritual, but to them that are in carnality, the word of God says it is foolishness unto them. And I pray that the word of God will not be foolish to you. I pray that the word of God, anytime it is released, listen to me, that what makes the difference between us and motivational speakers is that we release life. When I speak, I release life. When I declare something, I release life. Motivational speakers will only make you feel good about your situation. But when you go back home, the same issue comes back to you. But when we speak from Zion, when we speak from the throne room of God, when we, whatever we are doing right now, I'm speaking life. And when I came to speak about spirit of revelation, it is because I want you to begin to understand that this is the time God wants you to begin to know him for yourself. God wants to begin to him at a personal level. Praise the name of the Lord. Exploits are for us. These things are not just for, for, for the people outside there. These things are for us in the kingdom of God. A revelation means you are totally depending on the leading of the Holy Ghost. Whatever you, you put your hands to do, God tells you to do it. Whatever you, you begin to declare, God has to back it up. And so when you speak, that word becomes a rule. Praise the name of the Lord. When you speak, that word becomes a rule. And you see the reason why people are laughing at the church and are laughing at believers, it is because we have made the things of this, the kingdom of God look like they're not of value. But let me tell you something. We are changing that narrative in the name of Jesus. There is something God put in your mouth. That's why he says, every tongue that rises against you in judgment, not him he will condemn. It is you to condemn it. Why? Because there is something about children of God who are walking in the spirit of revelation. Praise the name of the Lord. People that are in the spirit of revelation are people that totally depend on God. Listen to me. Totally depending on God. And I mean it. Totally depending on God. A hundred percent you are depending on the, on the leading of the Holy Ghost. That if God does not tell me to move, I will not move. If God does not tell me to say, to say something, I will not say. But what are we seeing today? Today, go on Facebook and just post a status. Can I prophesy? Everybody will come to your inbox. They want prophecy. Why? Because people don't want to have a, uh, a, a, an intimate moment with God to depend on the leading of the Holy Ghost, where God can lead us. And I pray for mercy that we will not be a people or a generation that is hungry for, for, for prophecy and we are not hungry for the word. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, not just prophecy. And that is why we are, we are raising a half-baked generation, because we want quick fixes. What is God saying about me? What is God saying about me? Can I have a church can, that can depend on God? Can I have a church that can depend on God? Can I have sons and daughters that can depend on God? Can we have a generation that can depend on God? Because that is what God wants us to do. We must walk in the spirit of revelation. People that walk in the spirit of revelation don't wait to be told what to do. They hear God and they begin to act. They hear God and they begin to act. And this is the confidence that you have. So when we look in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, 3, verse number, let me go to verse number uh, 26. After Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have been thrown in the fire, and the people that tied them, remember at this particular point, the fire has been hit. 
there's sometimes more. It's a common story. We all understand it. But there's something I want to see about this, this particular context. The Bible says, Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. The moment Nebuchadnezzar threw them in the fire and his men were burned, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego could not be consumed by the fire. His eyes were open. His eyes were open. Remember, this is the same man who had made a decree that everybody must bow down to his graven images. But the moment the servants of God were put in that fire, listen to me, his eyes were open. And I pray for someone's eyes to be open in this broadcast today. Because sometimes familiarity breeds contempt and familiarity familiarity breeds a point of not receiving when, when a voice is speaking directly from God. And I keep saying this every day. There is a place in God where the voice of man becomes the voice of God. It is the place of revelation. I'll take that again. There is a place in God where the voice of man becomes the voice of God. And if you are not walking in the spirit of revelation, you cannot be able to distinguish when man is speaking and when God is speaking. And the danger with this is that you will ultimately miss on many things that God has prepared for us. I pray that you will not miss when God speaks. I pray that in these particular seasons, our eyes of understanding will be open. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, come out, servants of the most high God. He lost touch with his gods. He lost touch with his God. At that particular point, when he saw what happened, he called on their God. My goodness. May people call on your God because you are walking in the spirit of revelation. I declare tonight, may people call on your God because you are walking in the spirit of revelation. I declare Adelaide, may God, may people call on your God. Uh, Nehemiah Phyllis, uh, Pastor Grace, Pastor Jackie, may people call on your God because you are walking in the spirit of revelation. I declare tonight, may people call on your God because you are walking in the spirit of revelation. Somebody say amen. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire, 27. Then the high officers, officials, governors, and the advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was, sing was singled, and their clothing was not even scorched. They didn't even smell of smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, listen to this, then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not his God. Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I declare people that have distanced themselves from you, people that made a spectacle out of your, your, your servitude, people that made a spectacle out of the God that you serve, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who is a God of revelation. May they come to a point of realizing and coming to their senses and seeing the God that you serve. He said he sent his angels to rescue servants who trusted in him. When you trust in God, he begins to dispense revelation to you. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. You understand something here, child of God. There is a place where God wants to promote you. And he can only promote you when you are walking in his spirit. When you are led by the spirit. When you are walking in the precepts of the kingdom. Listen to me. You cannot fake what is real. Come on, somebody. This is the moment when God wants you to invest in him. God wants you to invest in him. Don't get busy for God. Begin to get busy with God. Am I speaking to somebody? Don't begin to get busy for God. Get busy with God. Don't begin to, act, to tell God come into my business. You are the one to put yourself in the business of God because the principles of God cannot change.
change. And I believe we are, we, are, we, are, we are entering into a dispensation and a time where the things of the spirit will only make sense even more clearly to people that have desired and have decided to walk in the spirit of revelation. I said the spirit of revelation is what shows us it, it gives us the ability to see to have divine intelligence over the adversary, the devil. Revelation gives you divine advantage over the people of the world. Hallelujah. That is why in times of storm, the Bible says we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. That is revelation. That even though there is COVID-19 all over, yes, there is chaos everywhere, but your faith is intact. That the same God who saw this thing coming is the same God who will see it live. Because God has never failed. And this won't be the first time our God will lose a battle. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. After revelation hit Nebuchadnezzar, my God, when revelation hit Nebuchadnezzar, he made a decree that from today you will worship the God of the three Hebrew boys. From today, nobody will worship my God, Kalobrasa. Nobody will worship the idols I have created. From today, you will worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I declare in the name of the Lord God Almighty that may people begin to worship your God. May people begin to worship the God that you serve, the God who parts the Red Sea, that when you are going through difficult situations and people are truly seeing you are in that distress, God still stands by your side and God still says, this is my beloved son. I will never, neither leave him, neither will I forsake him. I know things are tough out here. I know businesses are closed. I know churches are closed. I know the economy is speaking otherwise, but I choose to stand by the promises of God. For the word tells me that the promises of God, they are yea and amen. If he said you are blessed, you are blessed. If he said you are lifted, you are lifted. If you say you will never go down, you will never go down. Stand by the promises promises of God begin to activate your eyes of revelation that whatever God speaks concerning your life that is what it is and that is what it is say amen hallelujah my brother pastor Joseph we don't serve an ignorant God our God has never been ignorant yes brother he has never been ignorant whatever he speaks about the Bible says in Isaiah 55 11 that whatever he speaks every word that he speaks must come to pass I don't know what God spoke to you about, but he, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew that our God will never change. Even if we go in the fire, come on, we cannot, he cannot change his mind. That is radical faith. These are people that knew their God. These are people that were incubators of the secrets of God. Because the word says the, the people, I mean, the word says that, that the secrets of God are with them that fear him. The, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. And when we come to that place where we are not familiar with the voice of God, we are not familiar with the grace of God, then we begin to see things of the spirit begin to make sense. Why? Because our frequency is not dictated by the, 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 the things of the world, but by the frequency, the things of the kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why Jesus walked in revelation from the time he was born to the time he, the, he exited us. Every time Jesus spoke with parables and this one day the disciples came to him and asked him, Master, why do you speak to us in, 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 uh, in, in plain language? But when you go to the people, you speak to them in parables. He told them it is because the, the secrets of the kingdom of God Mashakab, have been revealed to you. But to them, it is up to them to search them. Do you know what this means? That when you become a child of God, there are some secrets of the kingdom that God wants to entrust you with. But until you mature, that's when God can entrust you. The word of God says that until a son, mature, a child matures into sonship, he cannot be entrusted with the estate. What does it mean? That there are some things of the kingdom that if God, even if he wants to give them to you, if you have not begun to walk as a son, he can't release them to you. That is why after COVID-19, you shouldn't be crying every day that, you know, oh, you know, God, why have you forsaken me? No, begin to declare the promises of God. Begin to declare the promises of God. Begin to declare the promises of God. And from that day, 
they were not only promoted, but the entire of Babylon worshipped the living God. The power of walking in the spirit of revelation. Cross with me to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15. Cross with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings, 2 Kings, very quickly. 2 Kings. Open up your Bible, 2 Kings. And to all women watching, I want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. You are a blessing to my lovely wife. You are a blessing. I want to wish every other woman, every other mother watching this broadcast as we go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15, a happy, blessed Mother's Day. You are, we are because you are, and we appreciate you. We celebrate you. You are a blessing to my wife. God bless you for standing with me and being a great mother to these wonderful children over in Fulham Fellowship Church and even in many, many, many nations. You are a woman that I appreciate God for giving in my life. God bless you. And to Fulham Fellowship mothers and anybody tuning in, happy Mother's Day. Now, Appenda Sana, now Appenda Sana, and I salute all of you. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 15. 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 15. If you are there, say amen. If you are there, say amen. 15. The Bible says, when the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried. 16. Don't be afraid, Elisha told him, for there are more on our side than on theirs. 17. Then Elisha prayed, oh, God, open his eyes and let him see. Look at that prayer. Look at that prayer. He said what? Oh God. Elisha prayed. Elisha prayed. This is just after. The, 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 the Arameans are coming. And they want to, to fight the servant of God. They are coming. And they, are, they have horses everywhere. When the king of Aram was at war with Israel. Then this, they they'd come to fight. The Bible says. He said oh Lord. Open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw on that on he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. 18. As the Aramean army advanced towards him, Elisha prayed, O oh Lord, please make them blind. So the Lord struck them with blindness as Elisha had asked. Then Elisha went out and told them. Then, then Elisha, then Elisha went out and told them, You have come the wrong way. This isn't the right city. Follow me, and I will take you to the man you are looking for. And he led them to the city of Samaria. As soon as they had entered Samaria, Elisha prayed, Oh Lord, now open their eyes and let them see. So the Lord opened their eyes and they discovered that they were in the middle of Samaria. When the king of Israel saw them, he shouted, Elisha, my father, should I kill them or should, should I should I kill them or should I kill them? Now listen to this scripture. The Arameans are coming to attack Israel. I'm talking about walking in the spirit of revelation. Elisha and his servant are standing by. And suddenly, suddenly, the servant sees a huge troop coming. And at this particular point, they're just the two of them, Elijah and him. And the man begins to cry. The servant begins to cry. What will happen? Now we are alone. How will it be? But then the man of God said something. I began by saying there's a place where the voice of God, of man, of God becomes the voice of man. And you must be sensitive to know when these two shift. The man of God told him, do not be afraid. And then he prayed to God. And if, if, you, if you read the scriptures very well, anything that Elisha spoke, God did it. And he said, God, open his eyes that he may see. Open his eyes that he may see. My prayer tonight is that may God open your eyes that you may see. My prayer for you tonight is that may God open your eyes that you may see beyond the natural. When you got the revelation, the things you do don't make sense to the natural eyes. How do people come in chariots to attack? And all you can do as a man of God is say, don't worry, he, the, the ones on our side are more than them. How does that appeal to the natural senses? It even does not make sense. 
because the things of the spirit does not make sense to the carnal eye. Praise the name of the Lord. The things of the spirit don't make sense to the carnal eye. He said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. In other words, give him a revelation of who you are. God, the mighty one in battle. If God would open your eyes today and you see the battle that he has fought for you, you will never complain that God is not there for you. If God will open your eyes to see the battle he has won for you, you will never complain that God has abandoned you. You would have died many years ago. I'm a living testimony of that. 2016, I died at Mata Hospital. God gave me life again. How would I be so ungrateful to say God is not there for me? How many times have my enemies come against me? But every time they come against me, God has raised up a standard. For the word says, every time the enemy comes in like a flood, he will raise up a standard. God has dealt with me in many ways and in every situation, he has opened my eyes to understand that if God is not by my side, Shakotaya, where would I be? If God would not be on our side, where would we be? Full Armor Fellowship Church, if God was not by our side, where would we be today? If God was not for our, on our side, where would we be? be today but in all these things he begins to open our minds he begins to open our eyes to a dispensation of revelation that we can be able to see that is not by our might not by our strength not by our connections not by whatever but by his divine spirit by his divine enablers if somebody is grateful to god say thank you jesus if you are grateful to god say thank you jesus if you are grateful to god say thank you jesus oh my god if God did not stand by us, if God didn't stand by you in this COVID-19 thing, where would you be? Yes, I know the economy is hard, based on what you are seeing, based on what you are reading on the tabloids. But if God has not been on your side, where would you be today? And that is why you must begin to stop complaining and go back to your mind and your senses and tell God, please open my eyes. May I see. May I see the truth of the matter. The servant of God said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And his eyes were open. In other words, he got revelation. Oh my God, my God, my God, my God. Lasso katora pasada. Eva zotara bhanda. He got a revelation. There are things kuna vita mungu amekupigania ni kwa sababu you are, you don't have a heart of gratitude. That is why you keep complaining. But if you if you could sink in the spirit and you begin to see for the things that God has done for you, you will begin to realize you your, your thanksgiving should be more than your complainings. Joy, God bless you. Your thanksgiving should be even more than your complaints. When you get to understand and walk in the spirit of revelation, you will not go before God every day and say, God, God, why have you not blessed me? No, you will begin to say, God, thank you because of what you're doing for me. Those things that did not happen, the Bible says all work together for good. Sometimes God won't give you what you expect and is protecting you from some things. Sometimes what you really expect God to give you will not work, will not come at that particular moment. And it's not time to complain. It is time to go back in on your knees and tell God, reveal to me, why did you deny me this? And you'll begin to realize in those moments, God will begin to show you something. He'll begin to tell you, I was protecting you from one, two, three, four. You know, if God was not by our side, we would have died a long time ago. So we must say thank you to Jesus. I, I always, I always pray and I say, God, Lord, thank you, Lord, because I have seen uncountable moments where God has literally picked me from, from death, picked me from people that you know things that had, had come against me like a like a flood. I have and I have every reason, and I want you to see that will only happen when you are living in the spirit of revelation. When God gives you divine intelligence over things that the natural eye cannot see. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Pastor Bessie, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Shalala baba baba. You understand what I'm talking about? And his, when he, his eyes were open, the Bible says, he, he saw on the hillside around Elisha was filled with the horses and chariots of fire. Now, he didn't see just the normal chariots. He saw chariots of fire. The mighty one in battle. Listen to me. I declare you will never lose a battle as long as you are or you are living in the spirit of revelation. And uh, as I finish this broadcast, I hear in the spirit, the Lord is speaking to my heart and pray for the spirit of revelation to rest upon everybody on this broadcast. So please stay tuned until I finish. I won't be long. I'm just almost winding up. I won't be long. I'm almost winding up. About 10 minutes I'll be done. I just want to, I want to pray for everybody that God will open your eyes of understanding, that you will be able to see things for what they are. I shared something yesterday on Facebook and I said, God is removing every smoke. When I was praying, I had God speak to my spirit, said, I'm removing every smoke. I'm removing every smoke and you'll begin to see clearly people for who they are. God began to speak to me, began to minister to me, just when I was sitting in, in the, my living room here. And God began to, to speak to me. He began saying, I will remove every smoke and I'll begin to show people for who they are. I want you to understand when God begins to tell you, that I will show people for who they are, things for what they stand for. Get ready for an elevation in the spirit because now you, you are going to deal with the things of high level, things that are deep, that are such in the deep. So you must be very sensitive, church. Church, listen to me. This is the time we must be very sensitive to the voice. I am telling you the truth. If you're used to the normal pastor Steve who just comes to church and he preaches and goes back home, I'm sorry, this is a whole new person. I have been in the closet. And I've been hearing from God. And whatever I speak is a decree. I am not coming to entertain. I am coming to put forth prophetic decrees and change the atmosphere. Already today, I just received testimonies here. I received testimonies here on my phone. When we were doing the Facebook Live, one of my sons, God blessed him with a new motorbike. Now there are three motorbikes. What can God not do? Distance is not a barrier as long as you are obedient and committed and submissive to the spirit of the living God. Shakala, brother Hannah. My God. And he saw chariots of fire. And when the Aramis advanced towards him, Elisha prayed, Lord, please make them blind. May God blindfold every enemy disguising against your life. May God blindfold every enemy disguising, coming, to pretending to be your friend, but there are people that are coming to, 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 to eat you up and destroy you. May God begin to blindfold them now. And may you lead them to the camp where they belong. Listen to me. After this season, you will begin to know people for who they are. I prophesy, I had this yesterday, and I'm saying it again here. You are beginning to see people for who they are. You will begin to know people for what they stand for because God is not mocked. Wale ambao wanajifanya marafiki zako na wanakuchimba kichinichini, awata survive msimu huu. Take these words seriously. There are people even on your Facebook pages that are not your friends. God will begin to show by their names. Go and delete, remove, delete, remove, delete, remove. Because in this dispensation that we are entering right now, God said he is removing every smoke. You will begin to see for clarity. You will begin to see people for who they are. You will begin to see people for who they are. My God. You must must understand that revelation is always ahead of your intellect. If you are going to walk in the spirit of revelation, it is always ahead of your intellect. Revelation goes far much beyond your mind because now you, you have yielded to the leading of the Holy Ghost. He takes over your faculty. He takes total charge over your faculty. When you have the spirit of revelation, you will understand that the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in the inside of you. If death could not conquer Jesus, then death cannot conquer you because the spirit of God lives in the inside of you. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Go with me to Philippians very quickly. Philippians, Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. 
Philippians chapter 2. Oh, shala kata bahanda. Something is happening in here. I sense a move. I sense a move. Wherever you are, get ready. I'm going to release. I'm going to release a sound. I feel God is dropping something in my spirit. Wherever you are, if you're watching me on your TV, you're watching me on, on YouTube, you're watching me on Facebook, whichever channel on your phone, whichever channel, when you start praying, I will ask you to put your phone down and I'm going to release the power of God. I'm going to release the grace of God to come wherever you are, to touch you. There are things that are going to change for the better. Kaya laba sata laba. Philippians chapter 2. Verse number five. Hey, Kalabala. Kalabarahanda. Thanks, Pastor, for the topic. I've been hearing some voices. Sometimes God revealing things to me. May God, today God open my eyes. Yes, he will open. He will open your eyes. Nehemiah will open your eyes. You, you are at the right place. You are at the right place. Kalabarahanda. My brother, Apostle Moses, thank you for coming on board. Divine intelligence is what we are talking about. Kalabarahanda. Let's go to Philippians chapter two, verse number five. Are you there? There's something I want you to see here. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 5. The Bible says, oh my God. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling on. Instead, listen to this. He gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. But now, when he appeared in human form, listen to that verse number eight. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on the cross. Verse number nine. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of the highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the father now what does this scripture mean the scripture simply means that you see when jesus being god in 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 you know being god in human nature humbled himself when he humbled himself now god has exalted him in other words god has revealed him as you know as has given him honor has revealed him to a place of honor as a father i mean as a son in the highest place now in the name of jesus Every knee bows, every tongue confesses that him is Lord. Now, nobody can come to the Father except through him. Now, what does that tell you? That before he came, we were living in sin. We were living in bondage. We were living in law. And there were so many things attached to it. But now with the coming of Christ, we have received revelation that we are now no longer slaves to law, but we are now sons in Christ. We have received a revelation that we have an inheritance in the Lord, the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I've, uh, uh, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as in heaven. I have come to do the will of the Father. It is not his will. He came to establish and enforce the will of the Father. So what am I simply saying? That if you are going to walk in the spirit of revelation, then you must be able to understand after every season of revelation, there comes elevation. After every season of revelation comes elevation. That is why even many of the pastors, let me use an example of the pastors. I'm seeing my pastor friends are coming on board. Let me use an example of the pastors. May, God does not just call people uh, that are, are self-made. God will always call people that are, are nothing. Then he makes them into something. He calls fishermen and he tells them, I will make you fishers of men. You've been fishing. You've been going to the sea, getting the fish. But now I want you to now see the revelation. Get to fish men for the kingdom. And when they catch the revelation, that is why Peter could abandon his boat. Andrew could abandon his boat. Uh, Zacchaeus could leave the tax collector. He would go and pick what is uh, taken from people shrewdly and give it back to them. Why? Because revelation comes and opens our eyes. And I pray that after this season, may God elevate you. The Bible says Jesus is elevated. Mashallah Krataba is elevated. Jesus is elevated. And now we now say in the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. I declare by the grace of God upon this altar, I declare wherever 
wherever you are, may the power of God come to your room. May the power of God engulf wherever you are. Whatever gadget you're using to tune into the service, let the glory of God illuminate your life. Let the power of God illuminate your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare, I declare, after every season of revelation, may God begin to elevate you. People that will, people will not understand you. It is none of your problem because every season of elevation, God begins to, uh, revelation, God begins to elevate people. I speak to 20 people on this broadcast right now. May your, your season of, may your season of revelation come now. May your season of revelation come now. May God begin to elevate you. Among your peers, may God begin to elevate you. Among your peers, may God begin to elevate you. The people that say nothing good can come out of Bethlehem or Nazareth, may they begin to see the Savior come out of the same place. May they begin to see something good come out of you. I prophesy to 20 people in this broadcast. May the elevation season begin to come. I declare by the masses of God, may the elevation season begin to locate you. You will never remain down there again. Your time of elevation has come. Your time of standing with the works of God has come. This is the season for kingdom millionaires to rise and I prophesy to 10 people in here, members of full of church and then they are watching whatever church. I declare may you partake of this word that in this season as you stand with your church, as you stand with your ministries, as you stand with your pastors, may God elevate you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Kayada Baba 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 Baba. Oh, shala kaya daba sanda la babo siri handa la babo sikiri hada. Le teri bazota kato blaha teri daba handa la babo sikaya. Le zera hando rozi kada bahande re babo zeke taya. Le prando zori ada hande kato shali kaya. Mas ze prada kato ida banda la babo zia. La ko zabra kato shida handa la kaya da babo za. Li kato prada hando shakato li prada. Yinde le baza koila mahando li bazata la ba. Receive it, receive. Somebody, just receive whatever God is dropping in your spirit. Just receive whatever God is dropping in your spirit. There is a push. There is a push in my spirit. This task is not a body. Let the power of God just touch you wherever you are. I'm, I'm sensing and I'm feeling in my spirit that some eyes are opening. There are spirits that are opening right now. God is beginning to drop some stuff in your spirit. Lasso, dahan, loli, katoya. Begin to receive it. Begin to drink from the realms of the spirit. Begin to drink from the, from the, from the, from the, from the, the throne room of God. God, begin to, to open up your heart. Let, let just God swell his spirit into you. Let him just fill you. Fill it. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Hey, Jesus, my God. You know, I, I just I just hear something in my spirit. The time frame between your prophecy and the fulfillment is revelation. I just hear the spirit. The Lord is dropping something in my heart. The time frame between your prophecy and the fulfillment is revelation. Uh, because God, because whenever God releases something to you, whenever God begins to speak something in your spirit, the time he speaks it, and when it, there's a fulfillment, what happens is he begins to he begins to he begins to allow you to walk in revelation. God will always show you the end product from the beginning. He doesn't show you the the, 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 the steps in the in the middle. But when what, what God wants to do, he wants to begin to walk by faith. He begins he wants to begin to walk by revelation. So whenever God gives you, whenever you receive a prophetic word, and then God speaks about your prophetic destiny, that then God now begins to make you, wants you to understand that he wants you to sink in the spirit. So whatever will be able to be the end product of your prophetic fulfillment is the revelation. Uh, let me come closer to somebody. Let me come closer here. Ah, uh, shalala babos here. Let me say it this way. God has given you a prophetic word through his servants and he said that, uh, in you will amount to something say for example you are going to be a prophet or you're going to be a pastor or you're going to be a market influencer or you're going to be a, a kingdom financial for example but then god gives you the end product the, the issue is this be rest assured you will become what you said so between the time he's speaking it and the time it comes to pass in between here he wants you to have revelation now how do kingdom financiers behave they so because the hand that giveth receiveth. How do prophets behave? Prophets disappear from the surface. They see God in the secret chambers. They begin to hear God. They only come out with thus says the Lord. They will never speak anything that God has not spoken. So you, you have to begin to look for revelation. And how do you get revelation? It is 
in your area of calling, you begin to work with people that are in that area. And that is why this is the best season to be attached to your man of God. This is the time you need to call your man of God. Man of pray with me. Tell me something. What is God saying? Because this is a time of revelation. Why are we out of church? Why are we away from church? Yet the church is supposed to pray for the corona thing to go. Why has God allowed us not to gather? It means that God wants to have a revelation of why he has allowed things to happen. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, every time God allows some of these things to happen, be rest assured, them that are in the place of revelation, when they come out, the entire of Babylon will worship their God. Revival is happening. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Them that have sown in tears will reap in joy. Them that have decided to de deny themselves the pleasures of the flesh to enrich their spirit in this season, God, will, you will reap in bounty. And this is the reality. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If you are going to experience your prophetic destiny, the prophetic fulfillment of your word, you must be able to seek revelation. This is a serious thing. This is a serious thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is a serious thing. Kayala Babu Saya. Feel my spirit is Luke chapter 5, verse number 5. Let me finish up. Luke chapter 5, verse number 5. That, that's the last scripture I might be reading. Luke chapter 5, verse number 5. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. One day as Jesus was preaching in the shores of Galilee, the, the Sea of Galilee, a great crowd pressed by him uh, to listen to the word of God. He noticed two empty boats at the water's edge, for fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Stepping into one of the boats, Jesus asked Simon the owner to push it into the water. So he sat on the boat and taught the crowds from there. Verse number four, when he had finished speaking to them, he said, Simon, now go in the deep and let down your nets to, to, to catch some fish. Verse number five is what I'm interested in. Luke chapter five, verse number five. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night and didn't catch a thing. Listen to me. La so kato. We worked hard all night. That's what Simon replied. Master, we worked hard all night. Listen, he said, we worked hard all night but didn't catch a thing. But if you say so, I'll let down the net again. And this time their nets were so full of fish, they began to tear. A shout for help, a shout for help brought their partners in the other boat and, as, and soon both boats were filled with fish and at the, at the verge of sinking. When you walk in the spirit of revelation, listen, when you walk in the spirit of revelation, church, please, church, get this word. Please, please, I'm speaking prophetically. I'm speaking purely prophetically in this particular service. Please get this word. Get this word. When you are walking in the spirit of revelation, there is a place where we will no longer apply. It becomes I. Because revelation is personal. Oh, Katosa. Oh, Jesus. When you walk in the spirit of revelation, there is a place where we no longer applies. It becomes I. They said, we toyed all night, but now at your word, I will drop down the net. You see, this is why in this season, I am not pushing people. I am not dragging people to me. I am simply doing that which God called me to do. Even if it is tough, it is hard, I keep doing what God called me to do. Let them that are partners, the Bible says the partners came on board and began to enjoy the catch. When you begin to walk in the spirit of revelation, you will not begin to drag people in the prayer closet. You'll go in the prayer closet alone and come out with that, says the Lord. Ah, shalala babosia. The place of revelation is a place of individuals, you and your God. Show me any man in the Bible, any woman in the Bible that was used of God. I will show you that these people had closet moments with God. When God, whenever God wanted to elevate Moses, he took him up the mountain for revelation before elevation. 
when God wanted to speak to Elijah and Elijah, he took them to the, to the wilderness. They spent time alone. And when they came out, they spoke one word and it shut the heavens. The Bible says, Simon replied, we worked hard all night, but we caught nothing. But now because your word, oh, your word is the light unto my feet. Your word has opened my eyes. Because your word has spoken at your word, 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 at your word I will do what you're saying I should do. Oh my God, oh my God. I wish someone can get what I'm talking about. At your word, at your word. You see, many of us do not have to maneno. Let me tell you. You must intentionally get a word from God. This is the time you get a word from God, you run with it. When you begin to reap, listen to me. It is you who will enjoy the blessings. The Bible says, so at your word, I let down the net. And this time their nets were so full of fish that they began to tear. A shout for help brought partners. Now, you realize when now God begins to, because of your secret time with God, place of revelation. Now, there are so many people who will begin to enjoy the blessings of God upon your life. There are people who are simply seated, waiting for you to gain so that they come and eat. There are some people who today, they will never celebrate you. But the moment God blesses you, they'll begin saying, we were good friends. You know, let me tell you, let me tell you. This season, I began by saying, and I'm, I said I'm speaking prophetically in this service. I began by saying, that God will give you revelation. You will know people for who they are. Kuna watu wamekawa na ngoja tu waone tu umebarikiwa. Ni wanze kusema. And nilikuwa na juwananga na Pastor Grace. Nilikuwa na juwananga na Christiana Wanga. So let me tell you. The time when you are planting. You are plowing the ground. Not everybody celebrates you. Because planting is hard. Building is hard. But when you have made it, everybody wants to be associated with you. But I'm praying for you that God will give you revelation to know who is for you and who is not for you. That is why the Bible says that when Simon realized, I've been working with these people, my fellow uh, fishermen, but with nothing has happened. I will not involve them in my personal encounter with Jesus. I will do it as he has told me. For some of you have maybe have an odd encounter with the sea, or some of you come from, from Nyanza, you'll begin to agree with me that it is not easy to throw the net alone. It needs a number of people to throw the net for, for a drought because the nets have to go very far. But at this particular point, the net that Peter put in the water, wherever it went, whether it was far or near, as long as Jesus had commanded the fish, it came. I don't know what you're trusting God for, but let me tell you something. It, when you begin to walk in the spirit of revelation, you will not begin to toil. You will begin to work smart. God will give you divine wisdom. God will begin to give you divine knowledge, divine intelligence on how to do his work, on how to serve him. And as you serve him, he will serve you. Don't listen. Some of you are waiting on God to come to your issues, but God is waiting on you to come to his, to his, to his, to his situation. God is waiting on you, but you're waiting on God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, Jehovah, Lord. Oh, Lord. When encounters become personal, revelation is always bad. I hear this in my spirit. When encounters become personal, revelation is bad. This is what I hear the Lord say. When encounters become personal, revelation is birthed. When encounters become personal, revelation is birthed. I don't know what you're trusting God for, but God wants you to have a personal touch with him. He wants you to have a personal touch with him. That is what he desires. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit. The sacrifices of God are a broken and a contrite spirit.
That is why in moments of breaking, multiplication happens. Oh, Jehovah Lord, some things are dropping deep in my spirit. In moments of, of breaking, multiplication happens. You see, if God is going to break you, be ready for multiplication. I don't know where you've been broken, but I feel in my spirit that the place you've been broken, God is multiplying you. If you've been broken in ministry, Carlos, Abrahanda, if you've been broken in ministry, get ready for multiplication. Full of fellowship church, listen to me. I don't care whoever is watching, but I know God is here. The breaking that we went through has just backed a season of multiplication. The breaking that we went through has just backed a season of multiplication. This is a moment that the undeniable power of God will not be will not be hidden in this ministry. I am prophesying live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Faf TV. This is our season to rise in power. If you are a member of this ministry, don't be left out. Oh, Shakaya. When you are broken, get ready for multiplication. The fish and the bread was only a lunchbox for the small boy. But when he broke it, 5,000 plus people ate that food. Because every time you are broken, every time you are crushed, the oil, the oil that comes out of you is something that people begin to do. To, to, to cry for they'll begin to look for it and i'm telling you this is the season for the emergence of the sons of god i prophesy to 10 people watching the broadcast right now may your season to shine come the word of god says arise and shine for your light has come this is the season. This is your season. No longer shall you cry again. No longer shall you cry again. You have a father who will never fail you. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. Pastor Grace, this is your season. 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 This is your season, Pastor Grace. I hear the Lord say, this is your season. It, you will not be stopped. You will not be stopped. You've sought him in the secret place. He's now going to use you in the public. He's going to now begin to use your ministry. Get ready for massive downpour of the Holy Ghost through your ministration. As you begin to minister, as you begin to sing, as you begin to counsel people, you'll begin to see the power of God move. Adelaide, the Lord is saying, the Lord is speaking, the Lord is speaking. This is quite personal i will call you after this broadcast uh or call me after the broadcast so it's, it's quite personal i can't speak on on, on on facebook live but i hear the lord speak something good about your life god is speaking something good about your life god is speaking something good about your life call me after the service carlos ah oh jesus 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 you love me too much jesus you love us too much Three things I want to write down if you're writing your notes as I finish up. Number one, you can never walk in the spirit of revelation if you're full of yourself. You can never walk in the spirit of revelation if you're full of yourself. You can never walk in the spirit of revelation if you're full of yourself. My God, my God. My God. Oh, shalala ba 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 you can never walk in the spirit of revelation if you're full of yourself. Blessed are them that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. Empty yourself. Kill your ego. Kill your pride. Listen to me. Pride is the killer of revelation. If you want God to use you, if you want to see the move of God in your life, kill pride. Kiburi. Pride has killed people. People began so well. I have seen. I didn't begin preaching today. This is my 24th year in ministry. At least five, at least 15 years in active ministry. And at least now about seven years running a, a ministry in a church. I have seen. And I've seen my some of the fathers who have gone ahead of me have shared with me also. My father was a close friend of mine. He shared some of these things with me. And I will tell you today. People begin so well. But pride takes them out before their time. Pride is a catalyst that wants to take away the revelation of God over your life. Swallow your pride. Swallow your pride and go back to the drawing board. Seek God while he's found. 
you will think you can run very fast but if you are proud you can run very fast but run in the wrong direction number two be prayerful and you will get revelation be very prayerful and you will get revelation be very prayerful and you will get revelation you cannot walk in the spirit of revelation if you are not a prayerful person listen prayer prayer is a communication between man and god now communication is not complete until the recipient responds and that's why prayer when it leaves earth as it goes to heaven a prayer that is made righteously is an incense before god but it is thunder when it comes down so when you pray right except expect a thunderous answer from god that is why i'm never moved by people's opinions concerning my life after i've heard from god any other speaker after the voice of god becomes a noise maker in my life and that's just my mantra and my family any other speaker after the voice of god is a noise maker i have no time to give attention to noise makers i listen to the voice of god you will never hear me prophesy things i've not heard god has said This is the reality. Because when you go to the place of prayer, when you begin to, uh, to know the dimensions of a father, there are times I'll approach God as my father, that the father that I know. There are times I'll approach God as the mighty one in battle, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one in battle. And there are times I'll approach God as my friend. Let us reason together. God says, come, let us reason together. And in all these dimensions, I begin to realize revelation is birthed. Revelation is birthed. I see a few people here, spiritually speaking and, and a lot in the spirit. There are people that are watching this broadcast now. And after this service, your eyes will open to the reality of the people around you. Don't cry when you begin to lose people. Don't cry when people begin to live your life. Thank God because he has, he has helped you to see the danger they would have caused in your life before they came. Number three, get revelation from the word of God. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If you want to see and walk in the spirit of revelation, spend time in the word. Anytime we come live, take time and listen. We are not wasting time online. We are not wasting time online. I wouldn't be here if I, if I didn't have heard from God. This is my family time, but I'm here preaching. Carlosa, my wife is there praying as I'm preaching right now. We wouldn't be spending time if we didn't hear from God. But we are doing this because we have heard from God and we want to feed you. We want you to understand that you must walk in the spirit of revelation. When you are a person of revelation, you read the word. You get every slight opportunity your shepherd comes online. You buy those data bundles and stay tuned and listen and stay tuned to the end. Follow simple instructions. If you're complaining to God about data bundles, how much will you complain about food? How much? That's why I keep saying priority is everything. Priority is everything. My goodness. We must be sensitive to the voice of God. We must be sensitive to the voice of God. This is what you need to understand. The last one. Through submission, revelation is birthed. When you are submitted to an authority, listen to me. You must be submitted to a genuine authority. You must be submitted to a genuine authority. And I thank God for my spiritual father, Pastor Doc. And Reverend Ken, these men have worked in my life. I seek counsel every slight moment. I seek counsel. And when I seek counsel, I get revelation. Listen to me. You can never, you can never walk in the spirit of revelation when you are not submissive. And I keep saying submission is not cowardice. Submission is power under control. Sub, be submissive, be submissive, be submissive. When you know it's time to be to be live on Facebook for the services, be live. 
When it is time to, to, to pray, pray. It is time to give, give. It is time to, to be taught, be, have a teachable spirit. I taught about seven dangerous people in a local church. And if you are not following those teachings, it is up to you. I'm doing my part. But one thing I want you to understand is God has given us the spirit of sonship. The spirit of adoption that Christ Abba Father. When you walk in that spirit, you will begin to see God do things in your life. I want us to pray. Holy Spirit, I thank you. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. This is the time you must be closer to your spiritual father. Be closer to your spiritual father. I'm telling you the truth. I talk to my spiritual father at least in a week. I have a session with my, with my, my spiritual father. I talk to Pastor Doc every day. I talk to Pastor Ken every day. I want nourishment. I just want to hear their voice. You must be connected to a higher authority. Without any contradiction, the lesser is blessed by the greater. Yes, I know we are all equal in the house of God, but there are those that have gone ahead of us and we must honor them. I'm telling you the truth. If you're going to walk in the spirit of revelation, I want to pray and I sense something is about to break loose in here. If you're going to walk in the spirit of revelation, you must be submitted. You must be planted. Oh, shalala babosia. You must be planted. You must be planted. You must be planted. Please come back online. I want to pray now. I want us to pray. And I want us to pray together. I want us to pray together. Today I came purposefully for, 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 for prophecy. I came to speak prophetically. And please mark this date. If you, if you are a good student, mark this date. There are stuff I want to decree. And you will see them come to pass. Thank you, my father. You never fail. You never lie. You are Alpha and Omega. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of the Lord to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. I want us to pray. Are you ready for prayer? If you're ready for prayer, tell, tell somebody, let us pray. Just type on the comment section, let us pray. Mention somebody's name and tell them, let us pray. I'd like, let us pray, Pastor Grace, let us pray. I know you've been in prayer all see, ever since I began preaching. Let us pray. 10th May, 2020, a day to remember. We will remember this day. I want to make some prophetic declarations. I want us to pray. Tag somebody, tag somebody. I want us to pray. Jesus, oh hallelujah, oh hallelujah, joy, let us pray. Oh Jesus, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, I worship you, Lord, I give you praise. Lord, you have spoken to us about walking in the spirit of revelation. Men of revelation, Lord, I know there are men of situations. And so many people watching this broadcast today, Jehovah Father, you laid this heavily in my, my heart this afternoon. That people are going through difficult situations out here. But one thing you began to tell me, tell my children, tell my children, tell my children. To focus on me and not the problems they are going through. The enemy came in like a flood and created the mist. But then the Lord told me to tell you. To focus on him. Moments such as this. He wants your focus. He wants your attention. Because he wants to minister to you at a personal level. After this season there are marriages that are coming forth. After this season, I'm seeing joy blossoming in some families. I'm seeing the first love rekindled in some families. After this season, I'm seeing kingdom financiers rising. 
men and women who God will release resources in their hands because God has, has trusted them with the little they have. I prophesy a shift in the atmosphere. As a prophet of God, I stand in my office today and I declare the promises of God that are yea and amen to begin to be manifested right now. The place between the spoken word, the rhema word, and the fulfillment is revelation. I release sight into your eyes. May the entrance of this word bring light unto your eyes. Right now, the Lord is opening your eyes of understanding. You will hear with clarity. For now faith comes by hearing and hearing the second time by the word of God. You will hear the second time with clarity. When Samuel was called, I hear the spirit when Samuel was called. He didn't know the voice of God and I was old. The first time he missed it. The second time he remembered if he calls you again, that is him. Say here I am. There are some of you watching this broadcast right now. You will hear that second call. Do that which God tells you to do. Do it. It will look stupid because the things of the spirit don't appeal to the common sense of man, but the spiritual senses. But go ahead and do it because therein lies your breakthrough. I foresee a season of economical growth in this nation. What we have experienced, yes, it has taken down this economy, but I prophesy live on Facebook, on YouTube, on Periscope, wherever you're watching this broadcast from, our economy will shoot again. I hear the Lord say it will shoot again. Because the church has stood in prayer. Oh, Shalala Babosi. Oh, Shalala Babosi. Randiri Babosi. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Receive the power of God. Receive the touch of God. Receive the touch of God. I don't know what you're going through. But I hear the Lord say it is over. I hear in the spirit the Lord say the storm is over. The storm is over. The storm is over. Church, listen to me. I'm overwhelmed right now by the power of the Almighty God. I hear the Lord say the storm is over. this is but uh, if you have gone through a season of humiliation God is has set up a table for you if you have gone through a season of humiliation I don't know whatever it is this word is for but you have gone through a season of humiliation God says uh, he has set up a table for you God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. This season, you will rejoice. You will rejoice. You will rejoice in your obedience. I see the hand of God over you. In your obedience, I see the hand of God over you. There is somebody particularly that I'm hearing on this broadcast, I'm hearing in the spirit, you have been branded names and you've been called like you are brainwashed or something. You've been brainwashed or something. Whoever it is, let go and let God. Let go and let God. He says he's fighting for you. He's fighting your battles. 
cast them unto him in Jesus name in Jesus name somebody shout I receive this word somebody shout I receive somebody shout I receive Lamentation chapter 3 verse 22 as I wind up says though the Lord's mercies and through the Lord's mercies we are not consumed because of his compassion fail not they are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness God bless you God bless you I want us to take a moment and give unto the Lord of our main service I want us to give unto the Lord our numbers are on the screen right there you may give you may send your offering you may send your type you may send your partners you may send your prophetic seed whatever you feel the Lord has dropped in your heart to do go ahead and do it uh, we don't have a formula go ahead and do as the Lord has purposed in your heart and I believe God shall greatly do something new in your life thank you for coming on board I know I've taken one hour and 20 minutes 33 seconds right now but I had to I had to for you who have been supporting us by even sending us you know the data to keep coming on like we do services every day every lunch hour from one to two we do live. these things are very expensive we do these services by the grace of God and thank you for standing with me thank you for encouraging me it is not easy thank you thanks to my wife for understanding and even giving me time to you know even be live in such a time I don't take it for granted it's because we love you and we want to be fed by the word of God so take a moment and be a blessing to this ministry give your tithes faithfully give your offerings faithfully stand with us and say man of God I'm going to be giving in towards the data that needs to, you know we need to pay the data need to pay the bills the church rents are waiting on us go ahead and give unto the Lord go ahead and give unto the Lord I know God will bless you. The hand that giveth, receiveth. The numbers on the screen, 0798 I know we shall be blessed tremendously. Otherwise, I love you, the love of Christ. Thank you for tuning in. See you on Tuesday for our lunch, our service. I know God shall bless you greatly. Uh, if you are uh, Phyllis, Neema Phyllis, Emma Phyllis, kindly, please call me. I don't know if you have my number, but call the number. Call the number on the screen. Call the number on the screen. 0798170. I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Uh, I, I feel a word dropping my spirit for you, but there's some stuff I can't speak on Facebook. Uh, there's some words I will give you at a personal level. Please kindly call me on the number on the screen. 0798170327. Emma Phyllis. Emma Phyllis. God loves you. God loves you. Amen. If you're there not born again, call the number as well. My pastor is standing by to pray with you. 0798170327. Call the number and we will pray for you and welcome you to church when we are open. Otherwise, Mungu wa bariki sana na wapenda. We say happy Mother's Day to all mothers. If you're a mother, if you're a mother on this broadcast, K. Gardner, amen, we receive. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, K. Gardner. Uh, Naema Phyllis, God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Pastor Grace, Happy Mother's Day. Joy Chichi, Happy Mother's Day. Adelaide, Happy Mother's Day. And everybody else who has been tuning in, and all the ladies who are starting to be mothers, Happy Mother's Day. I celebrate you, I love you, and I pray for you. God bless you, and see you on Tuesday. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Amen. 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 Bye-bye.